please be advised there are spoilers ahead related to the property being watched and or discussed. Hello, hello, welcome, welcome, welcome. This is Asha Media TV. My name is Asha. This is where I like to watch, react, and just give my two cents worth about a couple of properties related to sci-fi and fantasy. In today's video, I'm going to share with you my condensed reaction to episode 5 from the first season of Fringe titled Power Hungry. But before I share this reaction with you, let me just quickly give you somewhat of an informal recap as to what I've understood in episode 4. So there are three main things that came about. I guess you could say four if you count that drug dealer from Seattle. But overall, it's three main things that I'm taking in to carry forward with my reaction to subsequent episodes. So first being the observer, the extraordinary looking man named the observer by the fringe team. And this is a person who I'm understanding thus far has been observing a variety of paranormal or fringe science related or the pattern related events for decades and Olivia was able to spot him at a variety of places in a bunch of pictures they have within three months whereas it took apparently Broyles and his team a whole year. So I've taken note of that there's something obviously special about Olivia. How is it she was able to spot that particular person in a shorter period of time? Hmm, I don't know. So we'll see. And then we have, of course, the situation with Walter and Peter, where apparently the Observer saved Peter and Walter from death many years ago. And from the process, I guess, he used in saving them, it created somewhat of a psychic link, so to speak, between Walter and Peter, although Peter's not fully aware to what extent or what really that means and nor am I to be honest and nobody wants to spoil my experience with this show so I've had very little correction of whether or not what I'm perceiving is right or wrong so I'm just letting you know that okay all right so uh then we have of course the alien technology that was discovered in episode four this cylinder suppository looking uh shaped bomb or I wouldn't say bomb, but it acts like one and it bombs downwards instead of bombing outwards, right? And of course, the massive cliffhanger at the end where FBI agent John Scott returns from the dead to his ex-lover or current lover. I'm not sure about that just yet. <laughs> Olivia Dunham. So that's how the episode ended off. And I'm looking forward to seeing if that's where we're going to pick up from. I don't see how we wouldn't. And so here's a short version of my reaction to episode five of the first season of Fringe. Play. Worcester, Massachusetts. Bro, you're gonna be late. <laughs> Mama's telling you to wake up. Oh, is he recovering from a fever? It's recording. Eh. Unlock your hidden potential. Migar. It's Migar. Late again and you're making personal calls? No, no, I'm who's who's nobody. She a girlfriend? No, she came with the phone. She came with the phone? Are you kidding me? Oh, come on. Unbelievable. Two in one week. You sweeps leaving me here. Get on it. Get another gig. Oh, I can't play this scene with sound on YouTube. Dang it. How are you today? And we're still at the regional oh. manager's meeting tomorrow. Aww. His crush? Yeah, thank you. Can't you usually have a little tablet thingy with you? Yeah, uh, I usually do. <laughs> it's awkward. Hey, Bethany. Still want some drinks tonight? Of course. But you better not keep me out too late this time. Uh oh. It's a jealous streak in him. Okay. Alright, I 
spotted that one. He's causing those tech pro Oh, there's our observer guy. I'm now paying attention. Please hold the elevator. Don't scroll. Don't scroll. Just one picture. Oh my gosh. And he's the cause of it. Are you okay? Oh my god, are they gonna die? <laughs> All of them? No! Yep. Oh. Oh, he's alive! Oh, are they gonna make him the sole survivor and that's gonna be the big mystery? Oh no. I thought there'd be more blood, to be honest. I mean, that's quite an impact. <laughs> Unless they have to kind of keep it PG-ish. Okay, so he affects electricity. <laughs> doing it doing what you're the one doing it right i know there'll be an explanation to come so i trust you at least enough for me to not think you're gonna think i'm crazy no of course not i'm surprised we didn't start where we left off you saw john in my kitchen a little bit So she's hearing him, now seeing him. Oh, so you, you fall in love with your partner, who betrays you and your country. He dies in your arms, shows up in your kitchen, and you're wondering if that's grounds to recuse yourself. You want my advice? Next time John shows up for a nightcap, give him one. I'm being serious. So am I. You think that a few weeks pass and everything you went through just goes away? Hmm. He's almost too good of a friend. But he makes good points. So it could be guilt related, maybe? All right, I'll buy that for now. Say what it was about. Olivia? No, so tell us when she gets here. How are you feeling? Never been better. I was thinking about that man, the one who tortured you. Something about him. So familiar. Someone he tested, probably. Or experimented on. You cannot imagine what it's like for a man like me to not have access to parts of his mind. Mm. I think no one would want not to have access to parts of their mind. You're doing fine, Walter. Visiting hours. Everybody put on their best trade jacket. At approximately 10 17 this morning. A massive power surge struck a downtown high rise in Worcester, Massachusetts. Eight passengers have died. Did the cable snap? That's what's strange. The elevator didn't fall. It drove itself into the ground. Intelligence chatter speculated that it might be a demonstration of a new weapon technology. Override the elevator circuitry and you'll require a discharge of immense power and precision. Okay, so what's going to be the connection with that guy? We need to know what happened, how it happened, and who's behind it. Alright, so another pattern. They always have a previous case related to the case in the episode. Noted. So you've been briefed on what's happened? The damn elevator powered itself into the floor. I've never seen anything like it. For some reason, the motors kept going. Nearly melted the shoes. Which is technically impossible. Yeah, we're seeing a lot of that lately. And that guy was under great, um, emotion. It's almost like another generator came online. Jacked into the system and overloaded it with double or triple the voltage. So I'm wondering if that guy's emotional state um, amplifies the charge he puts out. Who would this place? All the symptoms of a classic. Thermoelectric trauma. What are you two saying? He's saying that all these people were electrocuted. Electrocuted. Okay, simply said. 24 karat gold. Traces of nickel. Possibly gold.
Whoever. <laughs> Every one of the passengers in this elevator dead by the time you hit the ground. Except for one. The government is asking if it's possible to make a human being trackable by pigeons. Like homing pigeons? What possible use could that serve? Regardless, our theory was that human beings are merely highly complex electrical systems. I've heard that one before many times. And the heart is the brain driven by electrical impulses. And because everyone has a unique electromagnetic signature and is properly altered, pigeons should be able to hone into that signature. Like the way they know how to fly south for the winter. Precisely. But I did surmise that it should be possible. Ooh, look at that! Did you just make them think of that delay? No, not in this particular instance. <laughs> in fact, it is the residual energy from that person that's making this heart function. And further, it is that person who is responsible for the deaths in the elevator. It was a human being. I love how he says it so matter of fact, like this far in. You know, this guy can feed the Matrix for life. How long has he had this as an affliction? I mean, he must be aware of it to some degree with all the notations of his temperature. Remember last week when I said to you the words I used, how sympathetic I was? What, what did I say? Right. I said you had to stay on the damn grid and stick to the schedule because the system here, even when things are working, depends on people like you being at the very least reliable. I've, I've had a really hard day. You're fired. Go. Mr. Boyd! Get out of here, Meager. I don't want to see you in this building anymore. He's going to do something to him. I want to know if it's intentional. Picturing that happening to him? You know what I mean? Or is it just a fluke of he knows his emotion creates something? Ah, uh, okay, okay, okay. It's just me. Just me kind of putting it out there. I know, I gotta wait and see as usual. I was trying to wrap my head around an idea Walter had. He believes that it may be a person who was responsible for the herd that incident. He thinks this person was altered in some way. Extensive procedures, chemical therapy. And Broyles, I'm sure, has some some knowledge about it. In the course of investigating other pattern cases, we've come across a handful of clinics, off-the-grid operations, that solicited clients by making the same kind of claims you see advertised on TV at 3 a.m. Have you ever heard of a man named Jacob Fisher? No. Conductor of biotechnology. Wanted in four states and three countries for illegal human experimentation. Using average citizens as unwitting guinea pigs. Ah. Because if Dr. Bishop is right, and there is a person with these extraordinary capabilities, it might very well be that someone made it this way. I'd like to read the files on Dr. Fisher. I'll have them transferred to your terminal. Electro man in the building. What is happening? It's okay. It's okay. It's just me. Is she really seeing him? I'm here to help. Did you have to kill me? No. Lev, you're on the right track. I'm here to tell you that. If you're looking for a person, the Jacob Fisher is after him also. You need to get to him first before Fisher can use him. Use him for what? How do you know that? I will prove it, Liv. And I love you. Always. Good luck trying to outrun this. He won't be in there. Does the 2,000 pounds have to do with anything? Let's see. The car 
weighed 1,440 pounds. The combined weight of the victims, 1,275 pounds. Leaving a discrepancy of 165 pounds. Meaning someone walked out of there alive. Walter's theoretical test subject. I think he's real. And that this could be him. What is Walter doing? If he was in the elevator car, he should have been electrocuted just like everybody else. And that's if the impact didn't kill him first. Not necessarily. This person is both the source and the conductor of a large amount of electrical current, and it could well induce a form of electrodynamic levitation. So he floated, like my necklace in the elevator. Like Magneto. <laughs> Maybe whoever we're looking for isn't in control of their abilities. Maybe they don't even know what they're doing. Mm. We shouldn't be looking for big events. We should be looking for small ones. I think he's getting an English. I say we need to find this person and soon before he finds out exactly what he's capable of. Oh, he knows all right. Wool socks. I thought he was practicing dance moves. <laughs> Where the hell have you been? Mom, I think I made a big mistake. You? Surprise! Oh, no, don't have him hurt his mom because she's an egg. A few months ago, I was reading this magazine and there was this ad in the back about tapping into your hidden potential, you know? And I, 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 I Bingo! Started, so I went down to this office. They did some tests. Did you get their money? Well, just put it. What the they, hell's the matter with they, you? They, they said they were going to uh, realign the electrical impulses of my brain. Make it mimic a more confident person. Oh, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. What if I'm dying? Stop it! You're dead! Oh, 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 Inducing a heart attack? Hello? 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 You just busted your phone. Oh man. He said something about to be confident, like. I bet it was to talk to that girl, that woman. Joseph Mika. He likes. You don't have to be scared, Joseph. We want to help you. They've been tracking him? What did you. So chances are he's not the only one they've done this to, right? Especially if it wasn't a newspaper ad. Hmm. More experiments. Experiment people to come. Hey, I've got another incident. Hold on. By coastal parcel. Guy lost his hand in a conveyor malfunction. By coastal parcel? Yeah. Better call you back. Connect the dots. By coastal parcel. Joseph Miko. Good memory to remember that. She was found dead. A pacemaker malfunction. Olivia thinks they may have found our guy. Yeah, now we just have to find him. Pacemaker, okay. That's unfortunate. Walter wants to know what's in the apartment. What kind of gadgets? Specifically electronic. Okay, there's a answering machine. An answering machine. Telephone. Telephone. Boombox. Boombox. Fan. Boom, boom, boombox. That's a device for playing music. Cassette tapes, yes? Yes, but now it's not really the time. Uh, <laughs> I would have to come home. I know how to find him. Okay. It's a cassette tape. Given the strength of Mr. Meagar's electromagnetic <laughs> signature, plus his proximity to the tape, I have little doubt that that cassette has been imprinted with Meagar's electrical signature. <laughs> Him. That's Mr. Mega. <laughs> What's his name again? Do you believe we can find him using Pigeon? Yeah, it's possible. As I've said, I can program carrier pigeons to track a strong electromagnetic field. We have his signature. Now all we need are birds. Wow, is there like a pigeon farm somewhere nearby? You know? How do you collect two dozen birds? You ready? Yes, I do. It's gonna be so cool to watch. Fly one of those pigeons. Oh no, please don't. That's not comforting. So we set all of these birds free, and they fly to Joseph Migar. Yeah, 
I know, me too. I believe it when I see it. Can you imagine? They fly to him and just shit on him. <laughs> I kind of hope they put that in for humor. GPS chips ready? Yeah. So we're putting GPS chips on carrier pigeons to find a man who can control electricity. Hmm. I need to thank for that, don't I? Yeah. That's me. Let's hope it works. Oh. Is this gonna be a thing now in every episode? What is this? Okay, alright, follow the rabbit. Last time we spoke, you listened. Oh, that's weird, especially if she's really not seeing him. I guess it'll give her some peace of mind. I didn't betray you. You know that. We know it. You know I wasn't the one. Hey, I think this bird thing might actually work. Hmm. Good thing he didn't catch her, like, you know, mouthing a kiss. <laughs> Jeez. Though we've only been together for a short time, but I think I'm going to miss them. Such majestic creatures. They're rats with wings. You get over it. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Then we're ready. Ladies and gentlemen, start your engines. <laughs> the pigeon show is about to begin. Soft yes in his heart. We gotta get a GPS to the mainframe. Genius. And we're in. And there are the birds. We're gonna find the lab and all that. What is that? It is unfair. And I appreciate that. The position. You find yourself in there must be so surreal for you. Are they trying to enhance him or do something else? I'm just kidding. Yeah. Okay. You wanted to be confident. That's why you came to us. No, I don't want to be confident. I don't need to be confident. But you are now. You are special. <laughs> well, he obviously doesn't feel or look special. score is so dramatic. It's good though. What is it? Visitors front entrance. Take him out through the back. Wait at the depot. You'll be contacted there. What about you? He's the priority. All right, my bet is that doctor is going to escape somehow. They won't catch him. He's the kind of character I'd keep around for future episodes, you know? Stop. Oh, I guess control now is in his grasp. Freeze! Stop! There's a lot of chasing around in these episodes. Like it's been a consistent pattern. Since episode one. Woo, that'll do it. Oh, well, they did catch him. Okay. He just seemed like the perfect maniac doctor. Mr. Migar? Miss, no one will tell me where I'm going. To the hospital. I'm going to perform some exams, check to see that your head's okay. 
but I'm gonna have some questions for you. I wanna go home. I'm afraid we can't let you do that. He will be added to the massive dynamic collection. Huh? Huh? It always ties back to them. That's been obvious since episode one. Thank you, my dear. What's my name? A Astrid. Starts with A. Yes. <laughs> Astrid. <laughs> I knew it. I'm glad they're getting along again. You haven't seen yourself lately. I haven't been sleeping very well. I'll see you tomorrow. You've been seeing him. Your friend, Count Scott. Well, okay, no, how, how does he know that? I've been having hallucinations. No. Not hallucinations. <laughs> what is this? But I believe when you were in the tank, Count Scott, that part of his consciousness over into yours. <laughs> His memories, experiences, thoughts. Do you understand me? Yes. He appears right in front of me. He talks to me. Yes, he would. Like a waking dream. Because he doesn't belong there. Your mind is expelling him. Exorcising his thoughts. He'll go away, is that what you're saying? Yeah, that's what I'm understanding. I don't know. Do you really want him to? Oh, so now it's on her? How much she's consciously wanting him there? Oh my gosh, that's insane! I mean, to be fair, whenever she sees him, it is helpful for her case. It's the only real advantage. And he's led her to some underground office. A file that he found in the cellar. Apparently, John Scott was conducting his own investigations. But it appears that many of the cases were pattern related. He knew about the pattern. He also knew about our friend, Dr. Fisher. In fact, he knew quite a bit more than we did. And there was also something else. John Scott's personal facts. It would seem some of them were intended for you. You really did love her, right? He just had to do what he had to do with whatever he was doing. No, is that... Oh, no, really? Oh my gosh, okay, yes, bring on the drama. Oh, it's even more heartbreaking. I will prove it, man. That I love you. Always. Dang, quite an episode. I can't get out of my mind though. That Walter just knew about the residual effects of when she was in the tank. And I'm like thinking to myself, why wouldn't he just tell her that? Like after it happened, why didn't he give her some forewarning of that possibility? Because now I'm wondering, and it's, <sighs> I'm obviously going to have to go and watch the previous episodes again to know if when John died, was he like looking out for these symptoms on her part before he said anything, right? Just like he noted that she hasn't been sleeping, she hasn't been herself. And then it's like, okay, maybe now is the right time to tell her that likely you're seeing John Scott because, you know, reasons with the whole thing of his consciousness linking to hers. Yeah, that, that really took me for a loop. Um, 
All right, well, there's not much to say except for now I have to look out for the observer in every episode. <laughs> And if I spot him, I spot him. It's like I have to be in this somewhat Weir's Waldo mode. <laughs> um, now, when it comes to the scene that stands out the most, and I don't want to say the obvious in every episode because the obvious would always be the case of the day, right? So in this case, we have Joseph and his electromagneto power set. That's already a given. And I'm trying to start this pattern of looking for scenes that add to my theory of what's kind of going on in the bigger picture. So I'd have to say that the scene that stands out the most with regards to that and kind of leads into some of my theories based on what we saw at the end of episode three. And that is the scene where Olivia first sees John at the office. The lights are out and she sees him in that elevator and he's talking to her and guiding her about the case. And what popped into mind at the end of that scene was episode three where there was transfer of data between the seemingly uh, unconscious body of John Scott and this computer terminal. And so I was wondering if maybe somehow he was telepathically talking to her like from that room to where she is but how she's perceiving it is as a vision but that doesn't seem to be the case according to Walter so what I'm understanding so far until further correction is that essentially when she was in the water as he said his consciousness linked up to hers therefore it seems as if it's only going to stay there for as long as she's allowing it based on her own need or want to see him and, and somewhat interact with him. I mean, at the end of the day, she loved him and he apparently loved her. So that attachment, that emotional attachment is going to be the deciding factor for her of how much of his presence or his consciousness stays linked with hers. <laughs> really mind boggling. Really cool though, really cool. But I can't deny that for some reason I can't articulate right now, I am annoyed that Walter just knew that and presents it conveniently at that point in time. Because I thought they would have at least maybe make it a little bit more dramatic so that she struggles with this for at least two or three episodes and then comes clean or perhaps has somewhat of a psychotic episode that causes Walter and Peter to investigate what's going on. And make that its own case. I'm not trying to put down the story writing and all that. I'm just saying it's ideas, right? It's ideas of other alternative ways I would have liked to have seen that revealed. But I'm trusting, don't worry, I am trusting this is where it is for its purpose that I'll see unfold in the next few episodes or what they're of in the next few seasons. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. This show truly is a mystery box experience and I am here for it. So when it comes to my Ash Emoji rating for this episode, I have to give it three. Three Ash Emojis because it's a good episode, but not great enough for me to want to rewatch more than once. I think that's fair. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this reaction video. And of course, I look forward to reading your comments about this episode without spoilers. And if you want to watch my full reaction to this episode, as well as get early access to my reactions, details about that is in the description box below, as well as details on how you can go about supporting this channel if you do enjoy what I do here on YouTube. So in the meantime, until my reaction to episode six, I'm tuning out, peacing out. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe and check out my other videos.